I promise to teach you 20 tips on how to bargain and negotiate. These tips will be about having the right mentality, preparation, practical techniques, precautions and what not to do, and some scripts and structure to get you started, including my favorite phrase. So let's get started. Tip number one is don't feel bad. Some people feel bad for negotiating. They don't speak up and just accept the price that's been handed to them. So don't feel embarrassed like you're cheap because if it's done the right way, you'll feel great and save a lot of money. Number two is to do your research. Do research on the product. If you can quote the prices of the competition to the person you're making a deal with, you will have the upper hand and they will be more likely to compromise. It helps to bring proof so get ready to pull your phone and show their competitor's website. Believe me, nobody wants to lose business to a competitor. So try this to reduce your interest on your credit cards, gym memberships, phone bills, or when you go shopping. Find what you think is a fair price and then aim to lower it by like 10% if you're buying or increase it if you're selling. Number three is to determine your cheapest price or worst case scenario. Before you even negotiate, make sure you know what's the price that you will without a doubt refuse to accept. Because if you've ever agreed to something and the next day you've regretted it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if someone is getting you to cross this line, be willing to confidently walk away and perhaps do more research or just go to a different place. Number four is to know who should make the first offer. If you're prepared and did your research, then make the first offer. Now if you're buying, make it low enough that they'll say no, but not so much that they think you're crazy. Because you'll always wonder if you could have gone lower if you don't pick something low and they accept it immediately. But if you're not prepared, then let them make the first offer. Just make sure you don't accept it and counter offer a better price for you, knowing you'll probably meet somewhere in the middle. Number five is to build rapport. Asking for their name and using it often can help build rapport. People tend to love hearing their own names. Also, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of small talk and trying to find something you guys have in common because it's much harder to take advantage of you if they like and connect with you. Number six is to try to get add-ons. If the price is non-negotiable or they've gone as low as they can already, then see if they can throw in things like free delivery or free accessories. Like if you're negotiating your salary, ask for more vacation time or if you can work from home. The point is, don't always just focus on the price. Number seven is to ask to speak to someone higher. There might be someone higher who can listen to your complaints and give you a better deal. But do your best to be friendly because no one wants to negotiate with a jerk. Number eight is to go under the table. On eBay, I'll sometimes message the sellers and ask if they want to bypass eBay and just use PayPal. Because remember, they have to pay eBay too. So they'll save money as well or it won't make much of a difference. Worst case scenario, they'll say no, but it's definitely worth asking, especially if they just want to really get rid of their stuff. Also, whenever possible, try to pay by cash. They might save money by not having to pay transaction fees on credit cards, and they might not charge you tax if you get it under the table. Number nine, cash says you're serious. Take out cash to show you're serious about buying and talk about your competitors. So if the price can't be agreed upon and you walk away, there's a chance they'll give in because like I mentioned in tip number two, they don't want you going to their competitors. But if the person has a monopoly and has the best price in town, then another strategy is to consider playing dumb during the negotiations. Because if the person knows you've done your research, then most likely they'll know you'll come crawling back. Number 10 is to match their body language. If possible, scope the area first and pay attention to match the body language and enthusiasm of the person you'll be negotiating with. This is easy to do as you can just say you're browsing if anyone tries to help you. So watch them interact with other customers and ask yourself, do they have high energy or are they low and calm? This way you can match them later. Matching your body language tells the person, hey we're on the same page, we have the same mindset, so let's both be happy with the end results. Number 11 is the leaning away technique. Start your negotiations leaning in, and when you disagree with the pricing, slightly lean your body back. Subconsciously, they'll pick up that they said something you don't like, and the negotiations might even start tipping your way. You should also watch their body language in case they're doing the same. For more on body language, I highly suggest you take a look at my video specifically on this topic, especially about understanding open and closed body language, because it's very important in sales and negotiations. Number 12 is the power of silence. Silence can create pressure. It can make people feel uncomfortable and make them crack. So if they throw in a price you disagree with, or right after you challenge them on something and they respond, consider pausing for an extra two to three seconds longer than usual, like you're not impressed. Number 13 is understanding the situation. 
Is the negotiations a necessity or is it just an opportunity? Ask yourself if one or both parties can walk away from the deal. In a divorce, for example, an agreement is required from both parties because you'll have more power in negotiations if you know the person needs what you're offering right now. Sometimes people just want to get rid of their stuff. Like for Craigslist, you could just arrive at their place and simply say, listen, I know you asked for $50, but all I got is $40 right now. Do you want it? And many times, they'll say yes without arguing. Number 14 is to mention if you're a regular customer and if you come there almost every day. And if you're dealing with your phone provider, tell them how long you've been loyal to them. Or if you're not a regular customer, then give them the impression you'll be a regular customer or that you'll have future deals. Number 15 is to have an escape plan. If you really can't sell on an agreement, then always have an escape plan, especially if you don't want to be rude and just leave. Like just tell the person you have a meeting or an appointment to go to. Number 16 is to never ever tell them the bottom line. Telling people your worst case scenario from tip number 3 can change what was a win-win situation to a lose for them. Don't tell them at the beginning, middle, and certainly not at the end. Tip number 17, while you're negotiating, don't physically hold the item you want to buy because you'll be less effective. This can cause you to be biased and the seller thinking it's already yours. On the other hand, if you're selling, try to get the person to hold the object or try out the product. Number 18, don't salami yourself. If you're selling and bundling things or services, don't break down the prices for each item. Just give the total price and say what it includes or what you're going to do. Otherwise, people might ask to remove certain items that they don't want or could get cheaper somewhere else. But if you're buying, then try to salami the person so you get only what you need. Next, to help get you started, practice giving a reason and then offering a price. That's really expensive for this old place. I was thinking more like 50000 The other store has this for just 60 bucks. Would you take it for 40 I've been a customer for two years. Could you reduce my bills to $60? You might be going back and forth for a while and some negotiations can take hours even, so try to save your best arguments for last. The last tip is my favorite phrase. Now after you've done all you can to get the best offer, try to get one last punch by asking, is that the best you can do? Practice this in the mirror using different inflection points. Is that the best you can do? Is that the best you can do? Is that the best you can do? Remember, a lot of people are bad in negotiations, so just even upping your skills by a little, you're giving yourself a big advantage, allowing you to save a lot.